Fauci, hello, welcome to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. My name is Keith, also known as Whiskey Tour Guide Keith, and obviously you can follow me here on YouTube or also on Instagram. Check me out, check my other videos, like, subscribe, etc. We're doing a little whiskey review for you today. This is the whiskey that we're going to be reviewing. It's a little bit different. It's not necessarily one I would normally be attracted to. This one was purchased for me as a gift by the good lady wife. Um, so it's yeah, something that I wouldn't normally be drawn towards. Now, if you're wondering about the name, it's Airston, A-E-R-S-T-O-N-E, -E, Airstone. It's not actually a distillery name. This whiskey is released under this brand name by William Grant and Sons. Now, William Grant are a big name in Scottish whiskey. They have, amongst other whiskies, they have Glenfiddich, one of the big three sort of by volume producers. They also have Balvenie, which is a favourite of a lot of people. Various different expressions under the Balvenie distillery. Both of those distilleries are up on Speyside, quite close to Dufftown, which classes itself as the, the capital of the whiskey world, capital of Scottish whiskey world anyway. Uh, I think they also have Drambuie in their sort of stable of drinks, William Grant. So this is one of two whiskies they've produced under the Airstone label. Uh, this is the Land Cask, and they also produced a Sea Cask. I've not tried the Sea Cask. I will get my hands on a bottle and I'll drink it for you, taste it, review it, etc. at some point. But today we're going to do the Land Cask for you. So this is a 10 year old, minimum 10 years old, obviously. Um, I'll read you through the, the label in a second. Um, I'm not quite sure where this was distilled. I think it's a lowland whiskey. It was certainly matured in the lowlands. If you aren't quite sure about whiskey regions, check out my whiskey regions vlog explaining the differences and the nuances in the different parts of Scotland where they make whiskey. Um, as far as I can tell, this is from the Girvan Distillery, which is down the southwest coast of Scotland in Ayrshire. Now, not A E R A Y R, A Y R, Ayr is a town down the, um, the west coast. Move this for a little second. So obviously we have Scotland, we've got the trusty whiskey, tour guide Keith Pointer. So if we come down here, this is the town of Ayr. This is Ayrshire. And a little bit further south is Girvan. So you have the Girvan distillery, which is a grain distillery. Um, so grain whiskey, so not usually for single malt whiskey. So I'm not sure if they make it there, but they certainly seem to mature it down there. And the Girvan Distillery, um, built in the 1960s, also incorporates Elsa Bay, which does produce single malt. So you may have heard of the Elsa Bay. And just off of the coast, this little dot out in the sea here, this is Elsa Craig. Um, just a, a little rocky island off the west coast of Scotland. Um, just off air. So I'm wondering if um, the Airstone here, A-E-R, it's a little bit of a play on words. Um, the address of the Gervin Distillery is the Grange Stone Industrial Estate. So Air, Grange Stone, Airstone, I reckon that's where they got the name from, but I'm speculating. Okay, um, I'm going to read you through the bottle and then we'll get some in a glass and we'll do a little tasting for you. So I like to read the, the promotional marketing stuff on both the box but also on the bottle so we'll see what they're saying about themselves so as i say the airstone single malt scotch whiskey no region on the bottle but uh, i do think it is lowland land cask rich and smoky aged 10 years it's 40 percent so it's right on the bare minimum a lot of people get a bit upset when whiskey's that week, but 40% uh, in alcohol terms is enough pretty much for anyone, so we're happy with that, as long as it's at least 40%. Peat dried and matured inland for over 10 years for a rich and smoky tasting whiskey with a lasting finish. Now I did look at some reviews online um, before I had a little taste of this myself, and it seems to divide opinion, but we'll get to that. Land cask. Some of our casks are matured in warehouses that are located further inland. The conditions here affect our maturation climate and help create a rich and smoky tasting style of whiskey that we call land cask. And sure enough, 
quite rocky, mountainous. Well, it's a little bit coast there as well, so it's uh, they're contradicting themselves a little bit uh, in the marketing department. Airstone. If you like our land cask, we also have a sea cask whiskey to try. For this whiskey, some of our casks are matured in warehouses that are more exposed to the cooler sea air. The conditions in this coastal location affect our maturation climate and help create a smooth style of whiskey that we call sea cask. And since the sea cask information is next to the sea, I'm going to let them off having the sea on their land cask. Packaging. Carefully matured for over 10 years in the intense environment that surrounds our distillery in the Scottish lowlands. For Airstone, we produce two distinctive styles of whisky, one called Land Cask, which is rich and smoky, as it says, and the one called the Sea Cask, which is smooth and easy. This is Land Cask. Choose your flavour and savour the taste of the Scottish elements from the warmth and comfort of your home. And that comes from the master distiller, the malt master at uh, William Grant and Sons, a man called Brian Kinsman. So thank you for that, guys. Okay, see if there's anything extra on the bottle. Now, it's, to me, it's a little bit of a sort of classic style of label. It's not too jazzy, not too up-to-date, not too modern. It's a little bit traditional. Um, the old sort of fashioned, I don't know if you go back 10, 15 years, certainly back to the, the 20th century before marketing took over as much as it maybe does now. So it's quite a sort of classic style bottle, quite classic label. Very nice colour, quite a rich and deep colour. I cannot tell you if there are any colours used, if there's any caramel colouring. Um, it's not telling me anything here that I didn't read on the label. Yep. Nope. So just exactly the same as the, the box. So that means we can get on to drinking it. You can see I've been into it. It's not too bad a whisky this. Remember whiskies are a little bit like uh, tartans. Scottish tartan. There's no bad ones. There's some that you like more than others. So I'm certainly not going to write songs about this whisky but it's worth a drink. I've heard it described as a midweek whisky. Save the, the better stuff for the weekend when you don't have to worry about your work the next day maybe. Okay, so as I say, it's quite a sort of nice orangey colour. It's got a bit of colour to it. On the nose. It's very nice on the nose, or for me anyway. Um, quite sweet. You do get that earthiness. It's like a sort, of, a sort of wet turf rather than earth, sort of green grass, wet, earthy turf. But I get quite a lot of sweetness. Quite citrusy, quite vibrant and certainly dominated by lemon. But I've got a little bit of pear as well. So it's quite quite pleasant. I don't really get too much of the overpowering. Certainly not, nothing too smoky. Peaty maybe, with the earth, but nothing too smoky coming through. Okay, now I'm a little bit when you're tasting this one, again a couple of the online reviews, some quite good reviews, some people saying it tastes like carbolic soap, bitumen, sort of tar, stuff like that. So it is, uh, it's, it's harsher on the palate. So here goes. I've got one last nice pleasant nose. So it's quite, quite bitter, almost a little bit aniseedy, a little bit peppery, not nowhere near the, the fruitiness, the, the citrus on the nose. Um, much earthier, less of that fresh earth, much sort of muckier, darker, drier earth, I suppose. Maybe not quite burnt, but certainly drier. <laughs> It's a little bit harsher, not as pleasant, certainly much nicer on the nose than in the mouth. You do get a little bit of, sort of toffee, sort of buttery fudge, once it's been there for a little while. 
so the sort of the tannins from the barrel I suppose and it's quite hot I can feel it certainly it's got that stab down your throat got a little bit going on it's not too bad quite thick legs on this one um, not too viscous it's quite quite runny yeah that, that after you after a little while you do get a bit more wood as well from it that sort of woodiness so we'll add a little bit of water see what that does to it trusty Lafroy jug Gonna go for three drops of water. Open this one right out. See what happens. Yeah, a bit more pear, a little bit more sort of the glycerin smell as opposed to the sweetness. Not as pleasant on the nose with the water, but it has changed it a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see what it does in on the palate. Sort of transferred more of that citrus sweetness to the palate. You can feel that a lot more in the mouth now. I can just see, I'm not sure you'll, you'll be able to see it really, but the, the legs are really quite thick, quite quick and dripping down the side there. Quite unusual. Yeah, certainly sweet, they're more that sort of honey glycerin, a little bit more honey coming through the glycerin, the sweetness, sugary, a bit of the citrus, more pear than lemon. And just that little bit of earthiness, nowhere near too overpowering with the earth or the smoke. So, quite an interesting whiskey. This one comes in, it's quite, it's basically a budget whiskey. Um, and I think they generally market at around about £30, but it'll be reduced down to maybe £20, something like that. So for a single malt, very decent. Uh, nothing to sing and dance about, nothing to write home about, but okay. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it. Decent. Um, very palatable and uh, I don't think anyone would worry if you gave them a dram of this so nice enough little uh, single malt 10 years old if you cannot get this or you want to try something like it or you like it and you want to try something similar uh, something like your Laphroaig 10 um, it's maybe a lot smokier but similar sort of thing Lefroy 10. Talisker Storm is another one. Talisker up in the Isle of Skye, up in the bit further north and west. But the Talisker Storm is a non age statement, so that would probably uh, similar sort of flavour profiles. And the one that I tried recently, I'll get the review online for you. If you can't find it online, it'll be up soon. Um, it's a whiskey called Aerolite Lindsay. Aerolite Lindsay. So, quite an unusual whiskey as well. Something a bit more left field. Also, not obviously a distiller, a distillery name on the label. So, Lefroy 10, Talisker Storm, or the Aerolite Lindsay, 10 years old, is quite reminiscent of this one. Hope you enjoyed the review. Remember, follow me, check out my other videos. Leave comments, suggestions, any questions you have, anything you want to know, anything you'd like me to try, um, get in touch. Only too pleased to uh, converse. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. All the best and Slanjava. Cheers.